This is another episode of the Exodus Project. I'm your host, Steve Eisenhower. And with me once again is my good friend, straight from Canada, Dan the Man Barwell. Good to be with you again, Steve. Glad to have you on, man. Um, with the Noahide World Center, check them out. Uh, great content on there for the Noahide life and so on. I'm sure he would appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But Dan, today, a little bit more of your best buddy, Kenneth Copeland. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you could get any more distasteful except the selections you've got for us. Oy. Yeah. Yeah. These are, these are some pretty tough ones. We're going to, we're going to react to, uh, it'll be three snippets of one video. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pagan. That's a pretty easy way to put this, uh, for sure. It's it's about the Eucharist and drinking blood and all this all this craziness. Uh, we're gonna see a little bit of Christian vampire action today, actually. Um, so let's hop right into it. I hope you guys um, get something out of this that me and Brand be me and Dan can bring something good to the table on this and kind of really show that these are these are mainline evangelicals doing this in front of however large a crowd but i mean this they have a large youtube following so i can't even imagine how many people have seen something oh, like this oh yeah and, and i think what you got to show is uh, at some major uh conference isn't it it might be it, it might be B O B V O V. am not sure what that stands for um but i mean let's get right into it and we can we can break it down as we go sure And just give me a confirmation to make sure you can see it all right. I can see it just fine, Steve. All righty. Here we go. Let's hop right into it. Okay. Now he's he's pretending to cut his hand. That's the cutting. That's yep, the cutting. Pretending. pretending no no cut drips. His... You see no drips. He's even, like, he's even like making weird noises, like it hurts, right? Like, And then I would do the same. And as you can see, they titled this video, A Covenant Combines Two no, and No one. drip down the, down the palm, yeah. I know. <laughs> this is my blood. Now we mixed our blood. See no cut on his hand? Nope. What you see, the knowledge is mine. And we could never separate. You can't separate. Ugh. You want to pause it there, Stephen? Yeah, ocean spray. Yeah. <laughs> the the cran grape transubstantiation, right? You, you can't, yeah. <laughs> you can't yeah. separate that. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, like oneness. I mean, you, you know, most people need to realize that that uh, there is something realistic uh, in chemistry known as synthesis, and sure. that's where you take two distinct elements and they become an actually a, something else, right? The combination, like we have water, is a combination of hydrogen and oxygen, right? That's water, but you, you know, people think of water as a a single thing, right? Uh, mm -hmm. but not, not in Copeland's economy, you know, uh, yeah. they're, they're now one, they mixed, uh, they get, he, he, you know, and this is, as we, I was saying before, how, uh, uh, Christian teachers, uh, uh, really push everything they say is always, uh, ambiguous and talk, spoken of in abstractions. And, uh, that way they can say everything and nothing at the same time. Right. And it's all about what you hear and what you think in your mind. And you can see here, this is a 40th Southwest uh, believers convention um, from Copeland ministries. And uh, I find when they're speaking with ambiguity and abstractions, they're only trying to get across in your mind, aberrant salience. It's like that person, you know, that's so stubborn always has to have things their way. Um, the best way to deal with somebody like that is to, propose ideas in such a fashion that they think it's their idea yeah. and then you know sure. and, and sadly you know this is a kind of a tactic that he's using uh 
with their uh, ambiguity and abstraction. So he's trying to paint the picture that, that, oh, we cut ourselves, which never really happened because you can see it clearly. Uh, but he's mixing two glasses together, saying they're one, uh, trying to paint the image that the blood has come together in one inseparable mass. Right. Um, but, the, the, you know, the whole concept is still non-biblical paganism like you said at the beginning yeah, it's exactly exactly you know oh go back to those ancient human sacrifice cults and just uh, it's disgusting uh thought uh, uh you know barbaric but uh uh what does one attribute to this and uh this is where aberrant salience leads to the salience bias and mm -hmm. uh in many other mind traps and uh they try to keep their availability cascade rolling right yeah this is actually something when i was when i was in church just just the way of how this like um stage is laid out right ministers bringing oh, yeah uh, no but ministers Always. like this Go on. Uh, almost having to do like a skit while they preach this type of thing uh oh yeah entertainment yeah exactly yeah that's what i was getting at is and like i said he was acting he was like acting like it hurt show. yeah and act like he was putting the blood into the cup and, and i mean come on blood covenants that, that's like that's like the the epitome of problematic and well you know, i think as as this progresses yeah i mean they they try to you know link this to covenant i mean most people yeah, just the difference between a contract and a and a covenant. You know, a contract is a, a legal agreement between two parties mm -hmm. uh, where each contracts what uh, is in agreement between them. Uh, but a contract is always written in a, a self-protective manner generally. And a covenant, a covenant is a mutual agreement where uh each party agrees to look out for the other's interest on top of their own so it's right. considered a higher form of a contract uh where you you covenant uh uh, uh to be united in something sure. um uh, and look out for each other's interest but uh, you know the way these guys start to push it it's just distortion from torah for sure definitely yeah so let's move on the hebrew word for that, for, for blood is Adam, or the root of Adam. Yeah. It's Adam's name was blood. Genesis chapter four, Cain uh, kills Abel. That word is not blood, cries out. We translated it into English. It would, it's plural. It's plural. It's two of them. I didn't know that. And it's bloods. So if he's going to assert that it's bloods, why does it have to be two of them? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and yeah, I pulled up Rashi on this, and uh, you know, he he confirms that yeah, it is in the plural form, sure, uh, of course, mm -hmm. uh, for a couple of reasons. The Rashi gives a couple of reasons. Um, well, before uh, you uh, before you bring up the Rashi, let's hear what he's going to say, and then sure. weigh it next to Rashi. That's from the ground. And so, Lord, why bloods? It was Abel and all of the seed that would have come from Abel. Bloods, bloods. Okay, and that's that video. That st stunned, stunned deer in the headlights there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what he did. But well, it is true. Yeah, that is, ahead, that is a plural. That is a plural uh, form of the of the word bloods. Uh, and Rashi does cite that his blood and the blood of his descendants, which can no longer be right because right. Mm -hmm. Abel Abel's deceased. Um, but he gives another explanation. He says that um, uh, Cain inflicted many wounds upon him uh, because he did not know from where his soul would depart. I mean, that's just the way uh the primitive mind you know right, like if his right. blood's pouring out is his soul coming out of here and, he, and so uh rashi states that the, the plural term is there citing that it may be from multiple wounds uh for the plural 
Uh, but the point is we use the same phrase for, for water. Uh, oh, yeah. You think, yeah. you know, you could say a cup of water, but that doesn't mean all the molecules in there are plural, but, but that doesn't right. mean you right. use, we don't say waters with sure. a cup of waters. Can I get a cup of yeah. waters? Yeah. And, yeah, and just, in fact, in Hebrew, my, uh, water is plural also. Mayim. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it is plural. Uh, Life, uh, also. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Uh, but one thing to point out is you did offer Rashi's second explanation, but the Malbim actually agrees with Rashi that it is, in fact, Abel's descendants. Um, so yeah, does that- and I, yeah, my rabbi shared that same point in our Genesis class uh, um, sure. because w- with the death of uh, uh, Abel comes the uh, the end of life, comes the 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 potential end of. Well, the end of all any any root, and it's just exactly. the way the Hebrew system exactly. uh, works. Like branches, if you cut a tree at the, the the stump, you know all the branches are gone, right? The so, point is, the point is, why does it have to be two? Right? He said it's plural. It's two. It's all his. Like it's just one of those things. Where why is he making these connections? And he really only used that, in my opinion, okay, in my opinion, the reason why he said that is he probably read that on like Chabad.com, right? And uh, he thought it was like, ooh, ah, you know, and that's the only reason he even said this was to get a ooh out of the out of the crowd and to get a ah out of Copeland. You know, I know that I'm the I'm the all knowing Hebrew teacher, right? Uh, but anything else when the Malbim or Rashi or the Ramban or Rambam or whoever, if they disagree with the Christian exegesis or eisegesis of a verse, they'll be the first one to vilify and demonize said Jewish commentary. But here, when it <laughs> when it makes a ooh ah moment at a convention, oh yeah, sure, we'll lean into that. You know, so once well, again, this is where this, this is where Christianity is most aberrant from from torres yeah you, you know i mean their uh idea of the shedding of blood for the remission of sins you know misses the whole point i mean uh most well all sacrifices you i think you and i discussed were because somebody uh uh transgressed uh uh, uh un- or in- unintentionally uh transgressed the not intentionally um and so you know they acted like an animal unintentionally they just they just uh acted like an animal and therefore an animal was sacrificed you know uh instead of their their flippant uh uh, uh behavior being uh, uh unintentional but uh the difference you know of with dealing with sin uh there was no sacrifice for intentional sins i mean that's you know outright rebellion and uh and totally over and over than... and over and over again you see the intention of bringing the offering has to be right too i mean david david says if if it would please you for me to bring an offering of a bull or a goat i would but that's not what you delight in you delight in the broken and contrite spirit right and then you know once yeah, and if once we return you're... then you'll delight in our offerings solomon says yeah. that the offering of the wicked is an abomination right? But the prayer of the upright is his delight. So it goes to show that the the mindset, the repentance, the penitent heart preceding yeah. said offering is the most important part so of this. The whole of the matter, for sure, exactly. is like if we read this story uh, and you back it up a little bit, um, the first thing to note is that God is talking with Cain, okay? Right, uh, exactly. Which would would yep. make Cain technically on the level of a prophet. And uh, yeah. He uh, omits. Adds a, he omits this part of Genesis chapter four. He goes right into oh, the yeah. of Abel. <laughs> he, yeah, because Christianity's got its own agenda, uh, you know. But um, uh, in verse nine, uh, the Lord said to Cain, "Where is Abel, your brother?" And he said, "I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper?" I mean, uh, we've all heard that before. Um, also, uh, if you back up into verse eight, and when Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, it came to pass when uh, they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Uh, that phrase uh, "rose up against him" uh, could mean that a- Cain was first on the ground in a scuffle, and 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 then Cain got up, got the upper hand, and you know hit him with a rock or whatever. Um, the point being, you know, that the Lord still spoke to Cain after that incident, 
sure. which is a huge point. Um, yeah, whereas Christianity, nope, you're a sinner. Uh, y- you don't have the grace to even speak to God. They think, you know, uh, uh, you got to accept their guy first and, and the blood, or, or, or you can't, uh, you know, uh, even, even, uh, talk to God in prayer. And, uh, yet, you know, God called, reached, called out to Cain and, and, and asked him where his brother was. And Cain spoke back. The point is, sure. uh, Cain did not have a repentant heart. Am I my brother's keeper? You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And another very important point is what did God say to Cain directly before that even happened? One verse prior in verse seven, it says, you know, and Hashem said to Cain, why are you angry? And why is your count? Why is your face? Why are you holding your face down? Right. Why are you, why are you uh, down in the dumps? Yeah. If you do well, shall it not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and to you shall be his desire, but you may rule over him. You know, in the Christian, in the you Christian, can rule world, over it for sure. in the Christian yeah. worldview, that can't work. This is directly oh, after no. um, the fall, the original sin. They're all polluted now. So how is it directly after that? The son, the very, the, like the very son, you know, you have this generational curse garbage. You have the son of the person who just apparently infected all of humanity forever with sin. And God says, listen, if you do the right thing, you can rule over sin. Yeah. If, if you improve. Yeah. Yeah. How does yeah, that work? But I mean, that, that same <laughs> verse in verse seven is where uh, uh, they get their distortion that uh, the devil walks about like a, a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And that's where <laughs> they get that notion from uh, that it, uh, uh, however, at the entrance, sin is lying or, or, or in wait. Uh, and to you, it is, it is longing, uh, but you can rule over it is the big, big uh, punchline in yeah, verse seven. Sure. sure. Even if we, so, even if we were to say, you know what, fine, we concede it. Concede it all. Sure, the devil walks around as a roaming lion. Cain was told that he could rule over it. So why why are you so why do you blame everything on the devil? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. It, people don't want to take responsibility for their own, especially anger. I mean, uh uh the one video I did on uh, uh, D- uh Dr. Uh, Joseph Lieberman's book, Never Get Angry Again, I, I, one of my better uh, most viewed uh, videos on the Noahide World Center. Um uh, yeah, wonderful book. Never get angry again. But the way uh, uh, anger takes control of the emotional override of a person's brain, and you Definitely. know, and you get hijacked from your prefrontal cortex, and it's just uh, amazing to think about uh, how you can control it. And uh, so that's just a book I recommend. Never get angry again, by uh, Doctor. Uh, uh, I think it's David Joseph Lieberman. Yeah, uh, Doctor Lieberman. If you look him up, yeah, never get angry again. Beautiful, beautiful book that uh, nice. uh, helps people with that sort of stuff. And and uh, the reality is, you can rule over it, and yeah. uh, um, it's it's not easy for some people. But you know, the challenge is what makes the victory that much more. When you really think about a test. A test is a test is a test. And if you just fly through a test, like it's nothing, uh, it holds no weight, but when you're in the midst of it and it's a, it's, it's a a hard test, that's what makes it meritorious is, is that you overcome. And and that's Hashem's message there. You can, uh, rule over it. And, uh, that's yeah. our own evil inclination, and that's where Christianity distorts the evil inclination. Yeah, our own individual evil yeah. in- inclination to the notion of the devil. Um, yeah, sad, it, but uh, that's um when I when I read Genesis four seven, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is almost like a parallel teaching, which really it is, as it's you know echoing the exact same message, is when Solomon says in Proverbs that the righteous fall seven times but rise. But the the wicked stumble over sin. Basically, you're going to stumble. You're going to stay down. Stumbles sitting there at the door waiting for you to fall over it. But if you keep yeah. getting up and going through that test, you know, Basic, that's, yeah, that's yeah, the whole point yeah. is in self, self-improvement and getting up if you fall, you know, and, and not letting sin keep you down, you know. And that's, oh, I think the Rambam in his work, uh, the eight chapters, does very, very good at explaining the, the illness of a soul and um how to overcome it and and 
he then describes the 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 you know what which is greater uh the 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 soul that's not tempted uh but thinks it's a uh what are they how he uses a certain phrase uh to describe somebody who's not tested but but uh um they don't have that demeanor right um mm-hmm. which which was greater uh the one that uh is 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 tested and has difficulty in it and yet overcomes or the person that is never tempted with it in the first place and um yeah it's clearly uh, those that are tested uh and overcome it's it it comes down to uh one of the best descriptions i've heard is is about the refining of silver and um the ancients would would refine silver seven times i think is the way wow. it's spoken about in tanakh and and what it does in multiple refinements is is by the seventh time it reaches a state where the silver will never again inherit a uh, 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 dross like not actually winning i mean you can get dirt dirt on it but you can't get it uh inside it uh, right right the metal it's it's purified right so mm-hmm. the purifying uh of silver you know uh, wow yeah so it makes it pure and it stays that way uh for as long as it shall remain and wow. uh um yeah you know it's not like that's incredible uh, yeah well when you understand yeah the the personal trials of life of course uh, yeah. this, this is yeah. what Hashem's saying you can rule over it and yep. uh uh it's a total different message than what Christianity professes. Of course, but nope, it takes you, it takes practice, right? Like <laughs> you got to learn. Well, trial and error. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Sadly, nobody welcomes trials, and I think this is why a lot of reason why our our futures uh, are uh, uh, not clearly seen for uh, before us. We 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 sure. see our direction we want to go on the pathway, but, uh, we view tend to view the world as either useful or abstract or, uh, obstructions and, and, um, an obstruction, you know, for somebody who's determined to get to the, 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 the their destination is going to overcome that obstruction. Uh, you're not going to let it uh, stop you on your journey. If you're, if you're, literally trying to cleave to the creator but uh right. the christian message is so off base with this oneness i think if you go to the second message or if you, if you want to finish playing this one um so this is the third one so this will be this will be what you're looking for okay you, yeah. unless you want me I to think, go back to the one with cain is that what you're talking about well i think this the 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 the, the series uh, if the, there was a the second video that you'd sent me you haven't shown yet and i think it bridges it's, the yeah, gap yeah it's about to start maybe. it's about to start right here so right on buddy we'll go through go this one it. now and uh and yeah, get this is after he cut himself and put put the blood and now they're one yep yep now let, let, let me illustrate something else now our blood has symbolically has been mixed here. Now at the communion table, yes, sir. He said, "This is my blood of the new covenant. All of you drink all of it." Judas had to drink that, yes, sir. So. Now, and I want you to be this way every time you take communion, and you ought to take it a lot. A lot. You will never. <laughs> yeah, no chance. Now his blood mm. is in my body. Yes, sir. It's in my His blood is in my body. We, the Western people don't know anything about covenant. Eastern people do. What the heck is he talking about? You know, where's the lead? He doesn't know. <laughs> no, no, it's this is this is the sad thing, like I said, about uh, ambiguity and abstractions. You know, he puts on this little show, tries to show a mixture uh, of blood and oneness and getting it into you. And 
you know, you're left to, to, to like, it's like a coloring book, a kid's coloring book, you know, with black outlines and you fill it in any color you want. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, unlike a paint by number set where you know what you've got right. to do, right. exactly. their, their ambiguity and abstractions are only to get your wheels turning in your own brain. And um, it's what leads to all kinds of biases and mind <laughs> traps. And these yeah. people do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then he goes into the conversation about the uh, Dom, right? And uh, he tries to explain the, uh, yeah. But the word uh, Adam comes from the Hebrew word Adama, not Dom. Uh, Adama is is uh, earth, right, or land. And uh, right. So right. that's why he was called Adam. He came from the, the earth or the, the, the land, not from the blood. Sure. Uh, but I, I think he tries to leave that in people's mind somewhere. And right. He, he, right. Yeah. And it's all, yeah. What's the connection? There is none in the story of uh, Adam uh, to do with Christianity at all. And in the uh, word, so the word for red is a doom. So that's the same, like, <laughs> you know, clay is red, blood is red, a doom, you know, same, all the, it's it's just one of those smoke and mirror type things as it was an ooh ah moment you know what i mean for it it was something the crowd obviously would have never heard before it's just this fella trying to sound smart you know and make it look like what they're doing is you know backed by some obscure understanding of genesis right it's to me yeah. to me none of this made sense you know, you're talking about, oh, no, you're talking about communion, but you're putting your own blood in the cup with somebody else. Yeah. Um, and calling it one. And, and then I think he's trying one. to paint the image in your mind of oneness that if you partake of the, their communion, you'll have oneness and, uh, sure, sure. uh you that know, you're, you, that you're now in Christ. Yeah, exactly. And Christ is in you and all this yeah, just yeah, pagan garbage. Yeah. But I mean, it's how many, how many people do you know? cut their hand and put their blood in the grape juice they drink at communion and you know have this spiritual well, it, experience it, that yeah, you know it's yeah. abhorrent and uh, uh definitely uh, uh pagan i mean you know is he trying to get across the, a transubstantiation uh kind of message here or 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 uh yeah it's ambiguous at best and uh sadly you know the whole ritual uh is nonsense and uh uh i think one of the gospels or was it early in action he was told to do it in remembrance and so that's the way a lot of mm -hmm. evangelicals uh, do it only in remembrance but still it's about the wheels turning in your brain and why you think you're doing it it's not about uh any legitimate connection whereas uh synthesis is when you uh put two two chemicals together or two two items together and something new is formed from those two uh something tangible like i mentioned water is hydrogen and oxygen in in the appropriate mix in 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 um you've got water uh, it's something new but uh i know that the hebrew people teach uh, you know that uh Abraham and Isaac and Jacob uh, each had distinct uh, character traits. And uh, Abraham was definitively emulated the character trait of chesed, uh, of uh, genuine loving kindness and, and charity. Yep. Um, and uh, Isaac was more on the side of din, where it's strict judgment, it's sure. exact precision. Uh, if you owe somebody... $12 and 42 cents. You don't give them $13. You give them $12 and 42 cents, right? You don't give them $12. <laughs> right. That's too low. You don't give them too much. You give them exact precision. And, uh, you know, each attribute has so many strengths, uh, and weaknesses. But when you get into somebody like Jacob, whose name became yeah. Israel, he exactly. synthesized Perfect those two characteristics exactly. into a third, uh, 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 characteristic that, uh, um, was considered uh, beautiful and mm -hmm. uh, 
Sure. Uh, if, if you've ever had some real gourmet cooks, gourmet cooks know how to put certain ingredients together so that they synthesize into a delicious one unique flavor. Uh, you can take multiple flavors and make one unique flavor rather than right, exactly. Uh, yeah, and that's what makes uh, a true uh, uh, chef connoisseur. Uh, their palates are perfect, like wine tasting. I mean, a lot of wine people, you know, know how to blend in the right measure. Whereas, you know, Christianity is just like what? Let your mind you know, get hooked on this and focused on this and dependent on it. Like we spoke before sure. and any, any religion that demands dependency, you know, cannot be forged in love. And, uh, um, yeah. 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 I mean that, that, that pretty much covers it. It's, it's, as we said, this, this whole ritual is pagan. It's all smoke and mirrors. Um, over and over, they're trying to say and do these things that are really just wowing the crowd rather than presenting any oh, legitimate message. But you notice how animated his eyes exactly. are, right? <gasps> his name was yeah. Blood. Like, you know, like, come on, body language and his facial expressions and the way he's manipulating well, his voice. Yeah, you showed his palm after he supposedly cut it. There was not a mark on it. And, and uh, he's acting like he's hurting himself as he's like, you know, cutting his palm is hurting and it's embellishing yeah, yeah embellishment. It's, it's a show it's entertainment and it's um well they're trying to keep this availability cascade rolling and uh uh yeah this cascade that says you're a wiggly worm and you'll forever be a wiggly worm and you can't even have uh, uh you know you need grace to even have grace and and yeah you, you know <laughs> just deny that you could call out to almighty God and he will, uh, uh, he will, uh, uh, show abundant mercy, yep. uh, which, you know, um, uh, Cain is a, is a story of uh, abundant mercy for sure. I mean, you know, he, he took a life, his life, you know, could have been forfeited, but, uh, he said it was more than he could bear. He would be an outcast and a vagabond. And, and the point being, uh, Hashem was merciful and um, let his lineage continue. And uh, um, yeah, I think uh, from what I, if, if, if what my rabbi told me specifically is that, uh, you know, even up to the flood, uh, um, that Noah's wife, I think it was Noah's wife was uh, in the, lineage of Cain and so if she continued um you know after the flood you know the prodigy uh the lineage would still be out there the point being uh I think that's neither here nor there but um uh that's the prohibition against murder is is crystal clear and and uh, uh the one point in in Genesis 4:10 you know where you know, Abel's uh, descendants were were gone. I mean, this has to do with God's foreknowledge, um, uh, and 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 to understand that uh, God's foreknowledge versus our free will and how that all balances out is some of the most rewarding and peaceful study, uh, bringing people a, a, a great understanding of why we're here and how we're here and and what for and. Uh, um sure how sure. free will legitimately can impact uh the future i mean you know if 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 able seeds were crying out uh from the ground i mean uh, uh the point is that uh, um our actions have far longing longer uh impact than we imagine and uh um yeah i think you know uh he didn't, Cain did not show the right attitude of repentance, like you mentioned earlier. And I think sure. that that's the biggest thing is that uh, uh, in four seven there, where it says uh, uh, you can rule over it uh, mm -hmm. if you've uh, 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 done wrong, you know, uh, if you improve, it will be forgiven you. The point is acknowledge where you went wrong, learn from your mistakes, don't do it again. And right. uh, exactly. Yeah. And it, it shows. It's it shows the dichotomy between 
you know, for example, when, when God is speaking with Cain, um, when he says that about, you know, sin is crouching at the door, but you can rule over him, that would have been considered a sin against God, you know, and, and God can be abundantly merciful in the ways we sin against him. And he's very patient, so on and so forth. Um, but where the tolerance kind of ends is when we start sinning against his our fellow man. Right, and right. that's where Cain really messed up is he kills his brother, you know, and, and doesn't admit to it. And um, for that, he well, this was, is why he, he was afraid that he would be an outcast. Well, he, right. you know, yeah, and his sin was against fellow men. And uh, so he would, you know, he he felt that yeah anybody who finds him would slay him and uh and that's you know, as, it's, it's one it's thing just... i find very important because christians are always <clears throat> at least in my experience of when i was christian the sins against fellow man aren't really weighed against it, like they flip it around you know like, sure like they do. everything is spiritual and you can be rude to your fellow man because i'm saved and i don't like we talked about kenneth copeland before he won't fly on a plane because people are just going to bring him down because they're demonic and oh full yeah of but this. don't don't you quote him on that I yeah yeah in the last <laughs> video don't don't quote don't you say i ever said that he, you know, yeah. he, he got real firm with the girl right that, uh, was calling him out on it and uh yeah but it shows that uh, it shows that completely flipped dichotomy where we should be so inclined to be mindful of how we treat our fellow man and and ourselves and ourselves and we ourselves know, there's, of there's course. a three way yeah between between our relationship between us and god us and our fellow humans and us and ourselves i mean these are the three aspects that people need to 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 develop in and improve in and uh you know uh strive for uh some degree of universal morality um yeah that i think uh can make the world a better place and uh in actuality and uh not just uh a pie in the sky uh dreams uh that if you drink uh, the right ocean spray uh <laughs> yeah cranberry grape juice you're gonna be uh yeah you know, oh maybe you need you know copeland to drip in it for you um <laughs> whatever the case is i mean you know whatever you're attributing to it is aberrant according to torah and um yeah it leads to the salience effect and the salience bias right. which leads opens up all kinds of mind traps and and this is when they try to keep this their availability cascade going they compromise and uh it's just the way things mushroom and balloon uh with fanciful notion and that's all christianity is is wishful thinking and yeah and at the end of the day we don't need that we don't need that bloody gory in christ pagan. distasteful we yeah. we are we really are I don't want to say uninhibited, but that's, we are uninhibited. We can go to our creator. Hashem takes no pleasure yeah. that the wicked would perish in their sins, but that the wicked right, would that they would turn. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. They would turn. Yeah. To my desire Back at all to... that the wicked shall die. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Um, turn to you, to who you are. Uh, who, who you are is, is, is who you were created to be. And, uh, uh, People want to know their their purpose. You've got to turn to who you really are, sure. um, who you were like designed and destined return to, to be. Turn to me, and I'll return to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, the, the future unfolds in a way that is peaceful, kind, and uh, 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 purposeful. Sure, and you can achieve your potential. Exactly. Rather than you know be shackled into uh, a ritualistic religion that uh, makes you drink grape juice um, <laughs> and assign you know some kind of aberrant point to it and uh yeah i don't know what more to say i mean copeland yeah, is just I... not never was even i spent 32 years as an adult between the ages of 18 and 50 uh in christianity and sadly uh you know he was one of my most unliked characters uh in christian circles and it's just, sure. just yeah the the speech is always ambiguous and yeah. uh but what's sad is, what's sad yeah. is even though we 
don't like this fella, but it, what's sad is something he's doing is working, you know, because he's, he's raking in the dough and he's, you know, got TV it's programs. A, it's an availability cascade is yeah. all it is. And, and, and so that cascade, to, uh, he will do everything he can to keep sure. it going. Like we said last time when he, he's 122 million, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, where he's just picking out the numbers for the people that attended uh, in the ticket booths, you know, when they go through the turnstiles, I'm sure they get counters that, you know, uh, he, he takes, he takes credit for every one of them. Whereas, uh, uh, you know, we see here that if, if it was, if bloods was, uh, Abel's descendants, I mean, Cain is responsible for all that. Whereas, uh, uh, Copeland's not responsible for all those that came to his right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. His yeah, whatever you call it, uh, sessions, his rah rah sessions. He's not responsible for those coming to their guy. But you know, it's like you know, people laying claims to the same numbers over and over and over and over and over, and makes you wonder. Uh, uh, but yeah, a lot of Christianities like that, and Definitely. they will always you know put their flag up. Uh, when it's uh, in their favor and uh, try to hide it under a carpet when it's not in their favor. And uh, yeah, no authority except their own derogatory behavior. Yep. Uh, and they will act uh, derogatory towards anybody that disagrees with them. And if you don't believe me, you just try it and ask. Yeah, try it for questions. yourself. Exactly. Uh, ask enough hard questions and they will treat you as though you're uh, now on the out group and, Hmm. but on a uh on a lighter note to sign off everybody i was just made aware of an article that rabbi michael skoback authored um that he has nice gentleman yeah yeah brilliant and spoken with him a few times he actually he actually gave a really nice review on my ebook too he told me i oh, good. hit it out of the park um but he he was talking about uh an article about people inquiring for conversion that, you know, just even a few years ago, it was rare at most. And now it's nonstop phone calls and emails every single day. Um, and a friend of mine who I admin, admin, a uh, Noah Hyde and Judaism group with um, told me the same. He's in the middle of his conversion process. His name's uh, Ben. And he spoke with his rabbi and said, Hey, are you like, experiencing this same the same thing and his rabbi told him he said yes if he said i could quit my job as a rabbi as a congregational rabbi and just do conversion classes for the rest of my life with the amount of inquiries we've been getting and to me that's that's zechariah 8 23 in the flesh and um if you and i dan are even just a little part of how this is going on then mission accomplished you know everything that everything mm -hmm. that i've everything that i've and been struck. i know you're working towards some good stuff too and you know i'm i'm thinking of starting next week back up my rocky mountain readings uh uh session and uh i'm gonna probably start next monday with uh, uh sefer hulkarim book uh which is a book of principles judas judaic principles and uh uh, just beautiful, beautiful work from the year 1425 or 26, uh, by Rabbi Joseph Albo, um, profound book. Uh, he kind of puts the Rambam under some scrutiny and a certain, a few certain points, but he comes out with some beautiful, beautiful explanations that just uh, lay out the principles in a very decipherable manner, um, for the most part. And so I think I'm going to start that up next week. Uh, since my schedule uh, 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 has has opened up, uh, you know, we labor to make our, ourselves a vessel in this world or or, or opportunities. And uh, when you build such, you you know, it opens up those opportunities. And uh, uh, this uh, I've had uh, a lot of success when I was doing this Rocky Mountain reading book readings, just to, for Jew, Jew, Jewish classics and uh, ethic works and. I, uh, it was doing well, but I had to stop it about uh, oh, 20 months ago. Uh, I took a job and then the job pulled me away. But now I'm able to manipulate uh, my 
current schedule till I can go back to the way I was doing it before and uh, hope Hashem uh, uh, blesses it or, or gets more of those fundamentals out there so that uh, people can see and understand uh, the truth of the Torah position and the beauty in the, in the, in the fundamentals uh, of Judaism uh, and, and that it overshadow uh, um, people's uh, uh aberrant salience in in christianity and uh, if they see it for what it is uh you know like i said before you can overcome mind traps just by understanding what they are and how they function and this is part of that genesis uh, 4 7 you can rule over it and uh, oh now i get it i see how it works and <laughs> i won't run into that same problem again if the uh, an incident pops up that you struggled with at one time you've been there before you know how to sidestep it or overstep it or, or walk right through it <laughs> yep. yeah and we're we're really we're really starting to see um deuteronomy 4 come to life right one day the nations will say you know how wise of a nation to have such a torah right forgive me <clears throat> was that a call for a sneeze kind of a both <laughs> Well, Gesundheit. <laughs> and yeah, you, yeah, I can't mute my mic. Well, I actually, it actually didn't come through. It might have been too loud. <laughs> but um, yeah. Sorry, buddy. No, you're fine. But like I said, we're seeing that message of Deuteronomy 4 where, where Moses says to the people and he says, um, one day the nations will say, you know, how wise a nation to have such a Torah. Right? It's, oh. it's your wisdom and your understanding, you know. Um, yeah, we're, all the people of the nations will grab the hem. Ten, ten of the nations will grab the hem yep. of a garment of a Jewish person and say, uh, us let us go you. with you, for we hear Hashem is with you. And uh, exactly. they want to learn. And uh, I'm so thankful for the rabbis that do share the depth of uh, uh, Torah truth. It, uh, it shines light to the nations and, uh, yeah, fulfills uh, their purpose. Yep. And potential. And uh, it's always a joy to play even a small part in it. And exactly. uh, I'm exactly. thankful for the opportunity. And uh, thanks point. again for having me, Steve. Uh, of course. Of course. No more Copeland, though, please. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that actually brings me to my final point. Everybody, uh, if you have something you want to hear me and Dan talk about, I know I've been actually been talking with some Jewish friends who say they really enjoy our shows. Because it just kind of gives them more of some insight onto the inner world. A little bit of background, sure. Christianity, yeah. Because yeah. they're unfamiliar, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So former Christians, Christians, Jews, whomever, <laughs> if there's a topic or you know anything like that that you'd like to hear Dan and I speak on and how our personal, how our personal experiences in the abuse machine that is Christianity might relate to that, yeah, just drop a comment email us find us on facebook however um we're we're totally open and we're here to we're here to help you we're here as a resource and we're just doing what hashem wants us to do for as long as he wills that we do it so oh, it's a joy i find uh, the older i get steve the less uh i'm provoked you know poked into a fight but uh I, you know i got so many stories i could share about the yeah just the the nasty ways uh behavior that uh humanity wreaks on their the the other other people it, it you just yeah i've seen it all in christianity and it's just oh, it makes me sick but um so glad to be out of it and that at peace yeah um, for sure life's too short but all right everybody dan barwell as you can see up on the screen no hide society of canada uh, Noah Hyde World Center, uh, Brit Shalom, the book is linked in the description below. Um, I also, I do believe I also have, it might be the link, to, I believe it's the link to your um, documentary you did on the flood. I do believe I have that linked in the uh, description as well, oh, great movie, yeah. as well as um, in the description, uh, you know, tagging the Noah Hyde World Center and so on. But please check out their YouTube, Noah Hyde World Center. It's it's really a stepping stone past what I, the Exodus Project, 
can give. I mean, we we deal in spiritual abuse of Christianity and leaving the church and, um, you know, counter missions and rectifying biblical contexts and so on. And we get into some type of, you know, whether it be the divine code or application of the Torah in our life, but really... The, yeah, you need the, you need an orthodox rabbi, yeah, to, to exactly, lead and guide exactly, and really the yeah. the meat to our milk is the Noahide World Center. So please, yeah, you don't want to be making your own religion and trying to make your way on your own. Uh, you're inevitably exactly. going to fall. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So also, if if that's the route you want to take, and you want to know how to apply the Torah yeah. to your life, we do have a few books linked. Uh, Divine Co. would be the one I would suggest. I have it in my drawer right here. Incredible resource, super exhaustive. Rabbi Moshe Weiner totally outdid himself with it. But also, like I said, Brit Shalom, which is by the Noahide World Center themselves. Lots it's of practical great applications for Noahides, for sure. Exactly. Exactly. But until next time, everybody, I'm Steve Eisenhower. This was the Exodus Project. Dan Barwell. Thank we'll you. All yeah. right. Have a great day. Yes, sir. We'll see you on the other side. 